Everyone, what's up? So I arrive in the forest, and it's hard to read there, but I see that Stray Curtis, the man himself, is already in the world. Uh, I didn't know he was streaming. I just happened to be invading here. So obviously that means there's two invaders. It's a gank. There's probably, or there's definitely dried fingers. Um, so I'm kind of trying to figure out who's who here. And this particular phantom here did not impress me very much, but he did something kind of smart, which we'll see here in a few minutes. So at this point, I've only seen three people, and I've got two of them on me, which means Stray Curtis has the other one. And I start to run back there, and then I immediately think better of it, because right now, he's got a single phantom to himself, which he's already killed, and so now it's a 2v2. I'm trying to stay out because I don't want to get mixed up in the meat grinder, uh, but obviously they had him kind of cornered. So I was expecting the panic roll there, and the Phantom knew it, and he knew I was going to go for the roll catch. But I knew he was going to try to punish me on wake up, and so I was able to, to turn it around. So now I got to go and try and hunt down the host. I doubt Curtis really needs the help, but just seems like the thing to do, I suppose. I didn't realize it right away, but the, the host did something smart there and he seeded the world. So now the challenge is trying to run this guy down with uh, neither uh, Curtis nor I getting in one another's way. I started using the light crossbow. I used to use the Avalon on this build, but it was so heavy and it really wasn't that much more valuable. Uh, and it went through explosive bolts hella fast. Um, so I've settled on using the light crossbow, and it's so light, uh, it adds so little uh, encumbrance to my characters. I've started carrying it on almost all my characters, and there I fire one into the ground just to stop him without uh, interrupting Curtis. But I really recommend it if you have it, and even if you have to hard swap to it on an occasion, all the time it comes in handy. All the time. One of the best tools I keep around on my build. And especially at those low levels, those explosive bolts can do a lot of damage. So over the past couple weeks or so, really probably the past month, I've been focused so much more on trying to be an actual invader and not just a duelist who invades. And so I'm always looking for opportunities to kind of think outside the box. And here is kind of an obvious one that presents itself. I saw the host up there. I don't see him now, but I think he's just lying down on the bridge to try to hide from me. And sure enough, there he is. I have to say, like moments like those make invading a lot more fun. There is a whole aspect of invasions that I've been missing out on for a very long time. This invasion here actually, I think, represents sort of the culmination of my experience as sort of a pure invader and less as a, a duelist who invades, as I said earlier. Um, I already have, I think, the cat ring on here. Yes, I do. Uh, but I don't think I had the obscuring ring on. And I think in a previous invasion, I'd swapped out the obscuring ring for the hornet ring. And I'm not yet disciplined enough, frankly, in my ring swaps to have already swapped back to the obscuring ring. And it's kind of a shame, too, because if I had, I could have gotten this phantom out here on the ledge quite easily with like a great bow shot or something and knocked him off. And in all probability, he would not have been wearing the cat ring. So I quickly realized I'm not going to hit these guys with any kind of throwables from down here. And I'm obviously I'm worried about a plunging attack because I can't really keep both of them in my sights at the same time very easily. So I kind of go down here and try to wait them out for a little bit. I hang out here for probably mm, a minute or two and they're content to stay up top. So I decide I'm going to throw on the obscuring ring 
uh, and grab the great bow and start pegging these guys to try to coax them to come down. And to be honest, at this point, because of my spawn, I'm not sure if they've already cleared out the other area. Um, you know, if they're doing Sigurd's quest, if they've already rescued him or not. So this approach works for just a, a few a few shots, but pretty quickly they realize what's up. And even though I have the obscuring ring on, they can still see the arrows. Um, so they kind of move to the back of the platform to hide from me. So I decide to change locations and come up to the top of this ladder where I'll have an excellent field of fire. And there's really not many places they can hide from me. And this is going to force them to either drop down or they're going to have to make their way to Yorm. It looks like they were kind of expecting me because the host was right on me as soon as I came up there. It looks like he's just got a regular bow, and that's not going to compete with what I've got. I kind of peer around here, and I see that they, they drop down, and they're most likely headed for Yorm. So at this point now, I'm thinking, I'm worried because if they run straight for the boss fog, it's going to be very difficult for me to catch them. Um, there's a couple of those demons along the way. There's one on the platform. And then once you get inside the building, there's another one with the fire hammer. But they really aren't that much, especially if you run past them. They're not going to slow the team down very much at all. So the obvious way to go at these guys, the way I would have probably gone at them every time up until recently, would be to just follow them straight across this platform. But I decide instead I'm going to try to surprise them and come out ahead of them where they're not expecting me. I'm also hoping that if they try to come and, and rush to the boss, I'm going to catch them right about the area where the demon's hanging out, and then they're going to have to contend with me and the demon at the same time. this point I realize they're not coming down and then I think maybe they're trying to set a trap for me maybe they're blindly assuming that I'm going to follow them the way that they came so I decided to go and take a look and what I found was so glorious <laughs> oh my god you don't get many like that I really enjoyed that that was too good Thanks, host. Actually, I should have probably found that that uh, that clip of Dokes uh, from Dexter, the surprise motherfucker one. It would have been quite appropriate there. Maybe I'll have to go and try and edit that in. Nah, I'm too lazy. I won't do that. So I bring you an invasion in progress. I had been trying to coax these guys out of that main hallway for some time. Um, and they're kind of annoying because they've got a, a sorcerer, this phantom, uh, and he is like laggy as all get out. And so you'll see when he starts casting, it's really hard to avoid. And this is my soul level 57 build at this point. The one that you saw previously, I believe, was my 70. Both these guys are pretty much straight dex builds. I get strength to kind of the bare minimum I need to use most of the weapons that I want two-handed. <clears throat> I think 18 strength, and then I get them to around 32-ish vigor, minimal endurance. Most of my builds don't have a lot of endurance on them, just because I tend to play a more passive, reactive playstyle that doesn't require as much endurance. And there I noticed I whiffed my attack because I was locked on and my lock on shifted. And I've been playing a lot more unlocked and it's something I've been actively working on. Uh, I know Pep left me a comment on one of my earlier videos about playing unlocked more. And he's totally right. It's really something that I'm working on. 
but especially with something like straight swords and straight sword R2s, I'm still really not very comfortable in what I'm doing to be able to reliably play unlocked. So at this point I start throwing undead hunter charms if for no other reason than just to try to put pressure uh, on the host and his phantom. But when I realize now I've got the phantom and the host is down below and can't get up here to save him very quickly, it was a golden opportunity to take him out. And this poor host gets pinned here in the corner. Man, we've all been there. That sucks. That's a tough, tough way to die. So as soon as I enter, I see that there's a dark spirit that returned home. And that can obviously mean a number of different things. Usually, in my view, what it means is another invader was here and was getting ganked. And so Black Crystalled out to avoid giving the party Estus, which is usually a bad sign. Usually means it's a nasty gank. But obviously, I see that none of the PvE has been disrupted. And then my Dark Spear friend is back in the world. Our host here is quite confident in himself. And you can tell just by looking at that sun, bro, man. That guy is just over-leveled as fuck. And when they both start throwing and shooting arrows at me, there's no way in hell I'm going to stand in there for that. And obviously, the other uh, Dark Spear wasn't uh, successful in getting those guys to come out of here. And there's no way in hell I'm going to go up in there and actually try to fight these guys, which is obviously what they're looking for me to do. And I know sure as shit they're both right around the corner. Yep. So I, I have a poorly placed uh, great bow shot. And here my invader buddy very wisely comes charging in and runs on the other side so that we can flank these guys. I thought about going for the parry there, but I thought for sure that guy wouldn't be stupid enough to swing multiple times. But now I've kind of filed that information away for later. Although, it looks like he may be playing unlocked. Then I see him roll off, and I realize the other invader killed the Phantom. And at that point, the, uh, the host knew the jig was up. And rather than face the inevitable point downs, decided to just kill himself and save himself the humiliation. So these next couple clips are actually a soul level 120. Um, and they, they really reinforced for me something that, that Nif said. Nif in one of his videos was making the point that many people who play primarily PvE and not the PvE, uh, they claim to not care for PvP. They say they don't like it. But when they think that they've got the numbers in, in their favor and they've got a sizable enough advantage over you as an invader, and that was a, a bad backstep that was supposed to be a roll and it nearly gets me killed. But when they think they've got the numbers uh, in their advantage, they are more than happy to engage in PvP. So it's not so much that they don't want PvP, they just want PvP where they feel like they have an outsized advantage and kind of crush you under their boot heel. And here you can see me playing unlock quite a bit more. Um, and if, if I'd had this invasion maybe six months ago, I would never have even bothered to try to come down here by the mobs because I would have assumed there's no way that anyone would be stupid enough to follow me in here. But the host has two phantoms with him and his bloodlust kind of gets the better of him. And the host makes a big mistake here. He gets trapped. 
can't roll out. And I'm only too happy to oblige him with a flurry of R1 spam. So this next host, it's very much the same situation. It's a host and two phantoms. He's right outside the boss fog. He could have run right up to the boss fog and kicked me out and easily fought this boss. But he sees that he's got a substantial numbers advantage, and so he decides he's just going to go ahead and give me what for. I'm still working on something, which is when I go chasing after a host and they're Estacing, trying to do a better job of, of slowing up so that I don't do a running attack. Because obviously with a running attack, the hit stun's very brief. And if I slow up, then I can actually get two R1s. But obviously, if you're too far away, the risk is you'll get nothing because they'll roll out in time. And I see here that the host is getting really aggressive at this point. And he just sets himself up for that parry. Overconfidence, man. Happens to hosts and invaders. So this clip I kept in uh, just because I thought... It was probably one of the best examples of spacing that I had had in recent memory. And this is something I've been working at, especially against larger weapons. Historically, my approach when I was fighting uh, ultra great weapons was to just switch to a straight sword and go for backstabs and things like that. But I've made a concerted effort lately to try to use spacing instead. And that can be a challenge, you know, when you've got like a. Uh, a great sword against maybe an ultra great sword you have to be you have to think really strategically you have to pay a lot of attention to your opponent's tendencies and you have to work really hard at your spacing to be able to punish them and there you see an example of what i was talking about earlier i was chasing after him but i pulled up and instead of doing a running attack i actually slowed down so i was able to hit him twice and obviously I was able to roll catch him there a couple times <clears throat> in order to finish him off. Uh, the last invasion here, this is soul level 70. Uh, I was doing a mix of uh, red eye orb invasions and Aldric uh, faithful invasions. Saint was streaming here and so a bunch of us were uh, invading and I got to invade with a number of uh, folks from the Discord, which is a lot of fun. And here I see this overleveled phantom doing everything he can to draw me in. So I know, obviously, the host is around, and I'm looking around to see if I'm going to get plunge attacked. I'm just waiting. Now, that Phantom was so close to dying there with that buffered running attack. And there I'm quite certain that the host did not intend to throw a throwing knife at me. He was probably going for his Estus Flask. Hey guys, thanks for checking in. Take care now.